Hello and welcome back to another video. This video is going to look at how we can get the ranking for each um, item within a result. So our example here is just we've generated basically a load of random numbers uh, from row 5 to 14 and what we want to do is use the function available to us in Excel to rank each one of these in order. So we'll do both ascending and descending, so ascending being ranking them smallest to largest and descending being ranking from largest to smallest. So you can get both perspectives of this um, of this function. And both of those are going to use exactly the same uh, function. It's just a slight tweak in one of the arguments uh, to determine which way we want to go, whether it's ascending or descending. So what we're going to do is jump straight in and we'll start with ascending. So the function what we need is nicely labeled or uh, rank. So we type in equals R-A-N-K. And you can see there's some other ones that have popped up here, but the one we're actually going to be interested in is, well, the first three are obviously rank functions, but the one we're going to be using is rank.eq. So the difference between uh, .eq and the .average is that if you have duplicates uh, and you're using .eq, um, what, the what will happen is it will... Uh, position each duplicate at the same rank. So say um, you had one, two, three, and three, uh, both of the three numbers would be scored as being the third position because they're exactly the same. If you were to use average, then what it would do, it would take an average of uh, the duplicates and it would then return that number for each of them. So it can be a bit misleading in some respects, but then I guess it all depends on the purpose you have of ranking the numbers. But for this purpose of this video, we're going to use rank EQ. So just double tap that. So you can either type in rank.eq or obviously you can just double tap and select it from the options. There's three uh, parts to this function. So the first part is going to be your result. So this is going to be relative to the row that you're putting the formula in. So for us, we're going to first select uh, the value C in row five, column B. And then the second part is then going to be referenced, so where the other values are contained. So to do that, we're just going to select everything in uh, the range from row five through to row 14. And what we must remember is to uh, lock this range so that as we apply this to other um, rows, that's not going to move. It's always going to be focused on uh, the rows 5 through to 14. So once we've entered the value to look for, and then obviously the range contains the other values, we then just do comma to go into the last part of the function. So this is an optional field. You don't need to put a value in there. Uh, but if you do not put a value, uh, the default is going to be um, to use the descending option. So it'll do as in obviously from highest to lowest. But what we want to do is we've got the two cleared criteria of ascending and descending. So we're going to select ascending for this one. So again, you can either double tap and select it from the option there or just type in the number one. Once you've done that, if you just close your brackets and hit enter, you can see that the value is then returned. So this one we have here, so 53,983 is the third, uh, is ranked number three out of all of these values. If you just drag this down here, we can see that that then will populate for um, all of those other results. And the reason obviously we lock down those cells is as you see, if you go to row 10, by locking and using those dollar symbols, that range is always going to remain the same. So you're always comparing on a level plan. Cool, so if you just come out of this. Cool, so we can now see that um, we can find the number one, what gives us the smallest value, because we're doing ascending, which is the 33,000. And the largest of our 10 values is the one just above it, coincidentally, which is 119,000. So having now got this ranked information in here, you could now sort this column by smallest to largest, and it would put the value straight into that format for you. On the opposite hand, if we want to do rank descending, we just need to put the formula in once again. So we go rank.eq, and then we can open our brackets. We then just need to do exactly the same. So select your the first value to check for that row, followed by the comma, and then the range in which the other values are contained. We're just going to put in our dollar symbols again, just to lock that range. And as we touched on before, you can either do the approach we just done there by entering the dollar symbols in between in, before the column and the uh, row reference, or what you can do is just hide at that range and hit F4 on your keyboard, and that will do the same thing for you. 
So at this time we're going to go for descending. So we could either leave this uh, argument blank um, because the default will be descending or just for clarity we can just type in the zero there and that will do the descending order for us. So if we now hit enter we can see that the result is now being published and as we pull this down that will populate for all those other formulas. And the best way to just quickly now show you how it's the difference between the ascending and the descending is if we go to rows 11 and 12, we can see that at the moment, uh, the 119,000 is, if we go in terms of ascending, it's number 10, so it's the largest value. If you look in descending, you can now see that it's the position number one, because obviously it's gonna start at the top, and the same for our smallest value available in row 12. So there you go, that is how you can rank all of your values in Excel, regardless on if you have uh, a small number like I we did, we've had 10 values, or if you've got a lot more than that indeed. This can be particularly useful if you're wanting to do uh, things such as the top 5 or the top 10, in the same way as the bottom 5 or bottom 10, and by having this formula in there it means it's dynamic, so as your numbers or anything changes, so will obviously your formulas, which again is going to be very useful if you're doing things like charts, or even pulling the information into pivot tables. So again, hope you enjoyed that video and it's introduced you to a new function or shown you how to uh, maybe a more simpler way to do something you've already uh, having to use a more complex or more strenuous uh, solution to do so. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure you hit that bell notification button so you are notified of all our new videos. As always, links to our social media pages and our website can be found in the description for this video. And if you have any questions at all, either reach out to us in one of those links or drop us a comment below this video. Thank you very much and we'll see you in the next video.